into our year recap. Uh, we, I've seen way too many films to limit to three, but we're going to start with you, Becca. Top three, 2012, on the spot. So my first one is one that's not even technically out yet, but it will be out this coming weekend. This is The Bay, directed by Barry Levinson. Um, this is the same guy who did Rain Man back in the 1980s, so this is kind of a detour for him to be jumping into horror. Plus, it's a found footage film, and I usually really hate found footage films, so um, this is a kind of a step for me to be liking it. But that said, this is about um, a bay kind of on the Chesapeake Bay in Maryland. They um, start discovering parasites in the fish, and they quickly move to humans. This is really gross, and honestly, I, there were a couple of big time scares in it where mm -hmm. I was literally shocked as well. Um, so this is definitely one of my top picks of the year. I really liked this film. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to yeah, seeing that one. Yeah, my second cool. one is The Loved Ones, and this one pretty much, it, it was released years ago, Down Under, um, and Elric produced this kind of um, Down Under version, g'day, which g'day. we watched. Was it a bootleg, Elric? Yeah, it was a bootleg, man. It was, it was a bootleg. That's we watched down there. Um, and we caught uh -huh. it, and then um, a couple of months later, it actually made it to a video release here in the U.S., very long overdue video release. And it did do a sh very, very small theatrical here in the US. I want to say like maybe three cities. Yeah, it was one of those tug jobs. Yeah, it, it was, it was, yeah, it did tug screenings. And it's a real shame this was a top notch film. It really should have had a larger theatrical. And it definitely shouldn't have been held the way that it was. I absolutely loved this one. So um, it's a torture film, but it's absolutely hilarious and really smart too. And very stylish. That yeah, was one very, of the very stylish. Film, yeah. I loved this one. And my third choice is Woman in Black. Um, now, I actually, I was on Geek Nation this past weekend, and Ryan Turk and I argued over whether Woman in Black was a good film. Um, he said that, you know, it was slow, it was very predictable. And I have to agree, it was slow, but I really liked that element. Um, I, I found it to be really moody, and I liked the darkness of it. And it definitely kind of shocked me in a couple of scenes. And I liked the traditionalness of it, that it was this traditional kind of gothic Victorian horror film. Um, I could have been tainted. I saw it in the middle of a snowstorm in like the skankiest movie theater that I could find in Virginia. But um, that said, I still absolutely loved this. And as runner-ups, I put Prometheus, which I really liked just because it was like an old school sci-fi horror film. You're just like a big uh, Harry Potter fan, right? I totally am. Like oh, I don't even remember his name. What's his name? Somebody? Daniel Radcliffe. Daniel yeah. I. You know, you didn't so mention Daniel that Radcliffe. Is the, um, it kind of has a J horror element to it, also, Woman in Black, which you wouldn't expect in a Victorian haunted house film, right? Completely. Yeah. I tend, um, art dread, I guess, is what I usually call that style of horror film, where it's like, you know, it scares the hell out of you without being really gross or without being really. Um, uh, kind of, you know, drastic without going to extreme measures. It uses much more of lighting and technique to scare. But yeah, it's something that Jay Hara completely implements and that America or uh, Woman in Black played up big time. Excellent choices. What about you, Stacey? Uh, well, I chose, I'm glad you said genre films, Elric, because none of my picks are actually <laughs> She's traditional so fired horror after the films. Show. <laughs> <I know. laughs> you go work on the comedy show. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Uh, yeah, my third choice of the year would be Headhunters, which is a Scandinavian uh, crime thriller. It's a very dark comedy. Um, and it's very, very gruesome. It kind of reminded me of something that the Coen brothers would do, you know, Fully, a, with yeah. a European kind mm -hmm. of sensibility. So that would be definitely one that I actually saw twice. Um, and the, my second choice for the best of the year that I've seen so far would be, well, of course, Killer Joe. Uh, William Friedkin, who uh, actually the screenplay is also by Tracy Letts, who did Bug with William Friedkin a few years back. And it's got that really kind of arch, uh, hyper real sense to it. And it's about the psychology of greed and where it can send people, which is to extremely dark places. Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and Fried Chicken, yes. You will never look at KFC the same way again. Hmm. Um, but uh, no, it was really a striking film, and that's one that I would definitely see again. And then my number one pick of the year, actually, I just saw a few days ago um, a pre-AFI screening of Brandon Cronenberg's directorial debut uh, in the feature arena. I don't know if he's done shorts before, but this is called Antiviral. And it's very close to uh, Videodrome. I kind of thought of it as Videodrome meets Gattaca meets Repo Man, because it's kind of this futuristic body horror. And it's really, really um, stylized. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think like 
uh, he's David Cronenberg's son. And you can definitely see the influence there, but he's taken it and run with it and created his own style. So I think that that movie was really, really thought provoking and filled with tension and the, the way that he just shows like the, the unflinching um, <laughs> horror of things that can happen to your body in the medical field. It's not pretty. Now, is it as gooey and visceral as David Cronenberg's films are? It isn't. It's a little more um, sterile. It's got this very, like, um, futuristic feel to it. It's more stylized. I think it's a little more heightened, a um, little more polished, um, but it still really hits you in the gut. So you're saying that David Cronenberg's son made a much better film than David Cronenberg did this year? I, I think so. Because you did not like Cosmopolis. <laughs> What? You did not like Cosmopolis this year. I didn't like Cosmopolis. So. No, I didn't. The Most gauntlet has been laid, like Dave Deprave. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just think that he's a very worthy success for, successor in his family legacy for sure. Definitely beautiful work. I would see that one again too. And we can see it next week, right? Yep. All right. I guess I'll, I'll whip through mine quicker because uh, you guys are probably more familiar. I couldn't believe no one picked Cabin in the Woods, but uh, <laughs> Cabin in the Woods would be my third choice, uh, largely because it was the most clever self-referential film, I think, you know, easily since Scream. And I actually thought it was a lot smarter than Scream in its own way. Um, it also felt like the final nail in the coffin of this, you know, uh, Kids in the Woods subgenre that we are talking about. But, um, you know, Joss Whedon's also just a really smart, clever writer. And what I thought was so brilliant about it is that it, the first you know, 70% is really just a comedy. Uh, and it still manages to scare you a little bit in the last with the fantasy and the creatures at the end of the movie. Uh, that's very rare. Uh, my second pick uh, is a film that I really struggled to put on the list, even though I love half of it a lot, uh, which is VHS. Um, there's parts in this that I thought were just incredibly creative uh, in a, in a subgenre I'm really bored of and have never really been that interested in. So I was really surprised that the stories in this that got me got me uh, so well, especially uh, the guest we had on the show, David Bruckner. I really loved his piece, and I also loved Radio Science's piece to end the film. And I think, you know, it's a great sign to be that creative with um, Warren, or at least try to reinvent and be playful uh, with subgenres, I think is fantastic, and styles. Um, so, but I, I think it's a very interesting film, and I think it'll be interesting to see it a few years from now. Um, and but my number one, the only film that was like had a firm place on my list, it's still my favorite horror film this year. Uh, I saw it at South by Southwest. It's uh, Kieran Foy who came on our show mm -hmm. a couple of months back, all the way from Ireland. Uh, his film Citadel. Um, it's just to me, it's like the only classic horror film I feel like I've seen in a long time that just has its roots in the kind of films we were watching uh, in the mid '80s. That just felt like it had. Uh, throwback to things like The Brood, it was very personal, uh, taking on uh, the subject of his own attack um, and being, you know, beat in badly. I just thought it was a very rich film, very simple, and actually pretty scary. And I think it comes out pretty soon. Uh, I had just one, a couple that I'd mentioned, Beyond the Black Rainbow, I didn't love it as a movie, but visually I think it's one of the most fascinating things I've seen in years, and I can't wait till s to see what the director does next. And in Lovely Molly, which I did really like, even though uh, yeah. my co-host here did not, uh, I did. the performance. Yeah, we, didn't like yeah, that we one. did not. Like Gretchen that Lodge, one. I think, gave the best performance of the year in any in almost any film I've seen this year. In my opinion, I thought she was fantastic, uh, and I actually liked the film. <laughs>